Hello everyone, welcome back to the question answer discussion session. So today's question is, which of the following is an octapeptide? A choice, oxytocin, B choice, vasopressin, C choice, glutathione, D choice, angiotensin 2, and E choice, bradykinin. So first of all, we need to know what is a, what is a peptide or what is an octapeptide? Okay. So before coming to know what is an octapeptide, we need to know what is a peptide. Okay. So normally peptides, as you all know, peptides are basically, they are chains of amino acids. They are chains of amino acids. That means amino acids are linked together to form peptides. Now how they are linked together? By, by a bone called as peptide bond. So if amino acids are linked together by a peptide bone, that is called as a peptide. So for example, let us assume this is one amino acid, this is another amino acid, this is the third amino acid and if they are linked together by a peptide bone like this, peptide bone like this, this is a peptide bone, then we can call it as then we can call it as a peptide. Now my question is, what is the minimum number of amino acid that is required to form a peptide? Yes, the answer is two. So this is the first amino acid and this is the second amino acid. And if they are linked together by a peptide bone, they could be considered as a peptide. That means the minimum um, number of amino acid that is required to form a peptide, the answer is two and such peptide which is formed by two amino acids are called as, they are called as dipeptides. And that means in dipeptides, the number of amino acids are two. Okay. Now similarly, so as we told uh, di in dipeptides, the number of amino acid is two, two amino acids are there. In the case of uh, tripeptide, the number of amino acids will be three. When the number of amino acids are formed and they are linked by peptide bond, that is called as uh, tetrapeptide. They are called as tetrapeptide. If the number, uh, number of amino acids are 5, then it is called as uh, pentapeptide. If the number of amino acids are 6, then it is called as hexapeptide. Similarly, if the number of amino acids are 7, it is called as heptapeptide. Whereas if the number of amino acids are uh, 8 and they are linked by peptide bond, that peptide is called as octapeptide. That means in octapeptide, the number of amino acids are eight. And assume that if there are nine amino acids and they are linked by peptide bone, such peptides are called as nonapeptide. So in nonapeptide, the number of amino acids are nine. Similarly, if 10 amino acids are there and they are linked by peptide bone, they are called as decapeptide, okay? So remember the number of amino acid uh, present in each of these peptides. Now uh, coming to the important examples for each of this peptide, let us take the first example that is a dipeptide. So as we have told there are the, the number of amino acids are two and the important examples of dipeptides are one is aspartam. So aspartam, you know that it is an artificial sweetener. It is an artificial sweetener. It is used as an artificial sweetener. So in aspartam, the number of amino acids are two. So aspartam is, is an example for dipeptide. Another example for dipeptide is carnosin. Carnosin, carnosin is an antioxidant. Carnosin is an antioxidant and it is made up of two amino acid. Therefore, carnosine is an example for dipeptide. Now coming to the uh, next uh, peptide that is tripeptide. That means the number of amino acids are three and the important example you need to remember is uh, glutathione. So glutathione is an example for Glutathione is an example for tripeptide and glutathione is in fact an antioxidant. 
So the glutathione antioxidant is an example for tripeptide and it is made up of 3 amino acid. One more example you, you could remember the, the hormone, the thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH, thyrotropin releasing hormone also contains 3 amino acid. Therefore, TRH is also an example for tripeptides. Now coming to the next uh, peptide that is the tetrapeptide. So tetrapeptide you know that uh, the number of amino acids are 4 and the important example you, you can remember is en endomorphins. Endomorphins are examples for tetrapeptide that means 4 amino acids are there. So basically endomorphins are uh, they are op uh, um, natural or op endogenous opioid neuropeptides. They are opioid neuropeptide. They are natural, that is endogenous opioid neuropeptides. So endomorphins, uh, mainly endomorphin 1 and endomorphin 2, they are made up of 4 amino acid. So they belong to the tetrapeptide category. Now coming to the next peptide, that is pentapeptide. So as discussed, the number of amino acids in pentapeptide will be definitely 5. And the important examples you need to remember is enkephalins. So enkephalins are examples for pentapeptide. That means it is made up of uh, 5 amino acids. Similar to uh, endomorphins, these are also opioid neuropeptides, endogenous opioid neuropeptide same as that of endomorphins endomorphins was also an opioid neuropeptide and encephalins are also opioid neuropeptide and that is an example for pentapeptides now coming to the uh, next one that is the six uh, hexapeptide that means it is made up of six uh, amino acids so hexapeptide we are peptides that which are made up of six amino acids and the examples you need to remember are uh, angiotensin 4 it is not that important but uh, try to remember angiotensin 4 remember the numerical it is 4 angiotensin 4 is an example for hexapeptide now coming to the uh, uh, seven amino acid containing peptide that is heptapeptide seven amino acid and the example is angiotensin 3 angiotensin 3 okay now coming to the uh, eight amino acid containing peptide that is octapeptide this is very important octapeptide the number of amino acids are eight and uh, the important example you need to remember here is angiotensin 2 this is very commonly it's more abundant and it is a very important uh, angiotensinogen peptide that is angiotensin 2 so angiotensin 2 is very important you need to remember the number of amino acid present in angiotensin 2 is 8 so they are they belong to octapeptide category in fact this angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor in our body it is a potent vasoconstrictor it constrict the blood vessels Sepotent vasoconstrictor so that the BP will increase. Angiotensin 2 is an octapeptide and it is a potent vasoconstrictor. Now, coming to the I mean, uh, um, peptide with uh, 9 amino acids, yes, as discussed, it is called as nonapeptide. The peptide with the 9 amino acid is called as nonapeptides, and the important examples are oxytocin. Vasopressin, oxytocin and vasopressin. So, was the oxytocin and vasopressin? You know that it is secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. Posterior pituitary. They contain nine amino acid and they belong to the nonapeptide category. One more example you need to remember in the case of uh, nonapeptide is bradykinin. So bradykinins are basically inflammatory mediators. They are also a potent vasodilator. It's a potent vasodilator and they are basically the mediators for inflammation. And they contain 9 amino acids. So they belong to nonapeptide category. So oxytocin, vasopressin and bradykinin, they are examples for nonapeptide. Now coming to the last one, 
that is the the peptide made up of uh, uh, 10 amino acid yes the answer is deca peptide so deca peptide contains 10 amino acids and the important examples are angiotensin 1 angiotensin 1 and gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh so gnrh and angiotensin 1 contains 10 amino acid and they belongs to the category called as deca peptide now so these are the important peptides um, we have started with dipeptide tripeptide tetrapeptide pentapeptide hexa hepta octa nona and the finally the deca peptide now apart from this um, these peptides you need to remember couple of um, other hormones also as well as some peptides which contains amino acids now the important ones are certain pancreatic hormones so the in the you know that the pancreatic cells or islets of pancreas contains mainly three cells one is alpha cells the second one is beta cells and the third one is delta cells you know that beta cells secrete which hormone yes insulin beta cells of pancreas secrete insulin what about alpha glucagon alpha cell secrete glucagon and delta cell secrete somatostatin somatostatin so alpha cells of pancreas secrete uh, glucagon then beta cell secrete insulin and delta cell secrete somatostatin all these are actually peptides uh, glucagon insulin and somatostatins are basically peptides and uh, glucagon is made up of 29 amino acids 29 amino acid whereas insulin is made up of 51 amino acids whereas somatostatin is made up of 14 amino acids somatostatin is also called as growth hormone inhibiting hormone growth hormone inhibiting hormone it is other name of stomatostatin so glucagon contain 29 amino acid insulin 51 and somatostatin 14 amino acid apart from this thing you need to remember um, other some of other hormones like the adreno the adrenocorticotropic hormone ACH, acths so acth contain 39 amino acids 39 amino acid and one more hormone you need to remember is uh, uh, calcitonin calcitonin hormone is also a peptide hormone and it is made up of 32 amino acids 32 amino acid whereas a acth is made up of 39 amino acid apart from this you need to remember uh, two uh, couple of gi peptides like secretin and gastrin so there are also uh, peptides uh, gastrointestinal peptides and secretin is uh, made up of uh, 27 amino acids whereas gastrin is made up of uh, 17 amino acids so they are all peptides acth calcitonin secretin gastrin all these pancreatic hormones they are they are all peptides now one more thing you need to remember about uh, the amino acids the number of amino acids present in certain um, proteins like one the very important one is hemoglobin so hemoglobin is actually a protein it, it is made up of a large number of amino acids and the, if the question is what is the exact number of amino acid present in hemoglobin the answer is 574 574 hemoglobin is made up of 574 574 amino acid whereas myoglobin they are transport proteins all these hemoglobin myoglobin transport proteins and myoglobin is made up of 153 amino acids 153 amino acid so remember hemoglobin the number of amino acids present in hemoglobin as well as myoglobin apart from this couple of antibiotics like uh, actinomycin d so this is an anti-cancer anti and actinomycin d actinomycin d is an anti-cancer antibiotic it is also a peptide and the number of amino acids present in actinomycin d is 20 actinomycin d is also called as dactinomycin they are anti-cancer antibiotic now one more thing uh, anti one one antibacterial antibiotic called as bacitracin is also a peptide bacitracin is also a peptide and it is made up of 16 amino acids okay so the number of amino acid in hemoglobin 574 
myoglobin 153 actinomycin d 20 and bacitracin uh, 60 so these are the important uh, proteins peptides and which are and the number of amino acid present in each of these now coming to our question which of the following is an octapeptide octa means the number of amino acid is 8 now we have told that oxytocin contains uh, 9 amino acids vasopressin contains 9 amino acid the other name of vasopressin is what yes antidiuretic hormone adh so it contains uh, 9 glutathione is a tripeptide that means uh, 3 amino acid bradykinin we have told it is uh, made up of uh, 9 amino acids angiotensin 2 is very important it's a potent vasoconstrictor and it is made up of 8 amino acid therefore it is an example for octapeptide so the correct answer for this question is definitely d choice angiotensin 2 thank you